I will call this, meet, this special meeting of the um, Transportation Policy and Planning Board to order. Reba, would you please call the roll? Grant Foster. Present. Keith Furman. Present. Barbara Harrington McKinney. Here. Randy O'Dell. Here. Christopher McHale. Here. Tom Wilson. Here. Balthazar Deanna Santana. Here. Margaret Bergamini. Here. Vajradet Lankella. And Carolyn McAndrews. Here. Thank you. We do have a quorum, so the meeting we are, the board is in order. Um, a few notes on logistics for the evening. We will have a short presentation from some of our staff members that will be interpreted, and then we will go into the public hearing. We will not be voting this evening. We will be voting on the amendments a week from today, um, June 6th. I'm going to go ahead and interpret that. Eh, buenas noches, ya tenemos en este momento quórum para empezar nuestra reunión en la noche del día de hoy. Eh, la reunión eh, consiste en una presentación corta de algunos de los miembros de nuestra mesa. Estas, estas eh, presentaciones van a ser eh, eh, interpretadas al español consecutivamente. Eh, no van a votar con respecto a las enmiendas de lo que se revise o se hable hoy. Esta votación definitiva tendrá lugar el próximo lunes 6 de junio. Thank you and uh, I'll try to keep my my um, comments more brief in between letting you interpret. Um, so we will begin with a short presentation from staff. Before we do that, are there any communications, disclosures, or recusals from members of the board? Vamos a empezar con las los comentarios de nuestros presentadores en la noche de hoy. Hay algún tipo de comentario, excusa, alguna cosa que quiera declarar alguno de los miembros de nuestra mesa en este momento, o alguno de ellos si tiene que excusar por algún tipo de razón con respecto a la participación esta noche. Seeing none, we will begin with our first item for the evening, Legistar 71227, adopting the Metro Network Redesign Plan public hearing. Um, we will begin with a short uh, presentation, I believe, um, Justin uh, Stoyenberg from Metro. Justin Stoyenberg de la Corporación Metro Transporte de Madison va a ser la primera persona que va a hablar en la noche del día de hoy para darle comienzo a esta reunión que tiene como título la, eh, el rediseño del sistema de transporte metro. That was held on May 16th. Um, and we will give you a short update um, on a few new things that came up. Um, and then uh, we'll go into the public hearing. Um, todo estos planes se eh, pusieron en los archivos en 6 de mayo. Ha habido algunas actualizaciones pequeñas. Vamos a actualizarlos con respecto a estos cambios hoy y después vamos a, a poner en marcha esta reunión con los comentarios para la reunión pública. Uh, as part of the public hearing, we will do the Spanish speaking uh, public comments first. Um, to ensure that they can be translated, and then we'll go to uh, any other comments, um, and the translation will move to a, um, a conference call for those who wish to continue to follow. Eh, en este, esta noche vamos a primero que todo darle paso a los comentarios de eh, las personas que hacen sus comentarios, preguntas o inquietudes en español. Van a ser eh, interpretados consecutivamente en esta plenaria. Después de que todos los comentaristas revisados en, es, que en español 
terminen sus comentarios. Vamos a pasar todas las personas que necesitemos eh, continuar oyendo este, este, esta reunión a una línea telefónica en español en donde el resto de la reunión de esta reunión pública va a ser eh, traducida simultáneamente. And uh, then I'll pass to Tom Lynch for a short introduction. Tom Lynch va a tener la palabra para su presentación y para presentarse él mismo. Thank you. As the Transit Network Redesign Study, was incorporated in the 2020 capital budget to address long-standing concerns regarding the existing transit network. Este plan de rediseño de la red de transporte fue un estudio incorporado en el presupuesto capital del año 2020 para poder empezar a tratar con las preocupaciones y problemas que se han tenido por a largo plazo con respecto a la línea de transporte red de transporte que tenemos en este momento. In 1998, Metro implemented the current transit network which used transit transfer points. En 1998, la ciudad incorporó el sistema de transporte con la red que tenemos en este momento que se basa en puestos o sitios de transferencia. It allowed more coverage but ended up having longer travel times and required more transfers. Lo que se logró fue un cubrimiento más amplio de la ciudad, pero acabó causando demoras y eh, las rutas se volvieron muchísimo más largas. From an onboard survey in 2015, the current transit system African Americans transfer three times more frequently than right, white riders. Eh, nosotros hicimos una encuesta de las personas que se montan y usan la red de transporte y nosotros nos dimos cuenta que los eh, usuarios afroamericanos se transferían tres veces más que los eh, usuarios blancos. Hispanic riders had 1.5 times the transfer rate as non-Hispanic. Los usuarios hispanos tienen una rata de 1.5 veces mayor de transferencias que los usuarios no hispanos. <coughs> On-time performance, transfers don't affect everyone equally. Nosotros también sabemos que de cuál es el desempeño de que la red eh, opere a tiempo y sabemos que las transferencias no afectan a todos los usuarios de forma igual. On time performance causes some to miss their transfers. Y nosotros sabemos que este desempeño de estar siempre a tiempo hace que algunos usuarios pierdan sus transferencias. If they arrive to their transfer point one or five minutes late, they have to wait in another 30 minutes before they can catch their connecting bus. Lo que causa que si ellos llegan al punto de transferencia por un retraso en su ruta de uno a cinco minutos más tarde, tienen que esperar 30 minutos al próximo bus para continuar su ruta. The current transit system, African Americans experience trips longer than 45 minutes, almost three times more frequently than white riders. Sabemos que en, eh, a, a, con todo lo que hemos dicho, los usuarios afroamericanos experiencian Viajes, tienen ex experiencias de viajes de 45 minutos o más, tres veces más frecuentemente que otros usuarios. Hispanic riders had trips longer than 45 minutes, 
1.5 times more frequently than non-Hispanic writers. Los hispanos, usuarios hispanos, tienen, experimentan viajes de más de 45 minutos, 1.5 veces más frecuentemente que los eh, eh, usuarios no hispanos. It is these problems that transit network redesign is trying to fix. Estos son los problemas específicos que este plan de rediseño de la red de transporte metro está tratando de cambiar. Now I'll turn it over to Mike Chekbala. Mike Chekbala va a hablar a conseguir. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mike Chekvala from the City Transportation Department and Metro Transit. Yo soy, o oh, buenas noches a todos, yo soy Mike Chekvala. Yo eh, trabajo con el, eh, la red de transportes de metro de la ciudad. This is the drafts network plan that was a, a first draft uh, that was an outcome of the transit network redesign study. Nosotros hicimos un estudio de rediseño de la red de transporte. Después del estudio de re rediseño, nosotros pudimos lograr hacer un borrador del de mapa, del plan. And the final plan will consist of this draft plan with several draft amendments. So you can see we have roughly 17 amendments scattered throughout the city. Nosotros tenemos aproximadamente 17 enmiendas o cambios que se han hecho a este borrador inicial a través, repartidos a través de toda la ciudad. Y este va a ser el plan final, el borrador más estas 17, 17 enmiendas. This document is on our website um, and there are two, uh, two minor changes that have been added to it, which I'll go through in just a second. Hay dos cambios pequeños que se han hecho que yo quiero revisar aquí hoy. Esto lo encuentran ustedes en nuestro sitio de internet. Okay, so the first one involves amendment number four, which has adds a route on the south side of Madison. Um, and uh, go ahead. Eh, la prime, lo primero, y lo que lo estoy buscando aquí, es una enmienda, que es la enmienda número cuatro, que lo que agrega es una ruta en el lado sur de Madison. Uh, this is a, 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 another uh, option for amendment number four called 4E. It adds a, a different, it, 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 it involves a, a different uh, version of Route O uh, that is longer and serves uh, different neighborhoods. Aquí estoy mostrando una alternativa a la enmienda 4 que la conocemos como la enmienda 4E. Esta enmienda lo que hace es una eh, tiene una diferencia en cuanto al largo de la ruta 0 o perdón, O y lo que hace es que sea la ruta más larga pero que sirva un área más grande. And the, the next new one is uh, regarding the Southdale neighborhood. It makes changes to Route G, uh, just south of the Beltline Highway. Tenemos otras enmiendas que son cambios a la Ruta G. Esa Ruta G está en el, va desde el sur de la Beltline, de la eh, eh, carretera Beltline. Uh, this is a new option, Amendment 16C, which adds a longer loop to Route G, which, which travels farther west uh, towards Ski Lane. Esta, esta, esta enmienda lo que hace es que alarga la ruta G, se llama la 16C, es una enmienda 16C, y lo que hace es hacer una asa mucho más larga, mucho más extensa para una ruta más extensa del sur que va más hacia el oeste, hacia el skyline. Uh, and I'll now hand it back to either Tom Wilson or Mick Roosh who will help us with the public hearing part of this. Vamos a darle la palabra a otros comentaristas. Thank you, Mike. Um, so uh, 
we, I will now open the public hearing and we will take uh, Spanish questions first. Um, if you are a Spanish speaker, please raise your hand and we will call on you to speak. Um, the public hearing allows five minutes for a speaker. Uh, because we will need translation for Spanish questions, there will be a 10 minute total, including translation um, for Spanish speakers. Muchas gracias, Mike. Ahora vamos a dar pausa a los comentarios públicos. Eh, de primera mano vamos a escuchar los comentarios públicos de las personas o las uh, o los opiniones o comentarios que tengan las personas en español. Eh, los comentaristas van a tener un máximo de cinco minutos para expresar sus comentarios o sus preguntas. Eh, los eh, hispanohablantes, como necesitan la ayuda del intérprete, tendrán un ex, eh, diez minutos eh, para poder hablar. Esto incluye la interpretación. In, interpreter, can you also interpret that they need to raise their hands if the, for Spanish speakers so we can identify them? Eh, quien sea que necesite hablar en español, por favor, levante la mano o ponga la señal de la manita para que los identifiquen y puedan hablar. I'm not seeing any hands raised. Um, could you please ask one one last time and then we'll just go on with our uh, normal list. No vemos ninguna manita alzada. Eh, vamos a hablar una vez más y bueno, luego procedemos a la junta. Okay, seeing no hands raised, um, I will just go down the list uh, in order. Um, first registrant is uh, Helen Kitchell, uh, 225 Potter Street, Madison, in opposition, wishing to speak. Um, can I interrupt you for a second? Can you still give the Spanish line in case anyone would like to listen in Spanish? Yes, uh, let me bring that up here quickly. Thank you. Yes. Um, if you'd like to hear the rest of the meeting in Spanish, including the comments of others, please join our Spanish conference call line at 1-877-810-9415, access code 120-8794-POUND, or hashtag. Si quieren escuchar el resto de esta junta en español, eh, por favor... Eh, vayan a, a su teléfono y marquen el 1-877-810-9415 con el código de acceso 1208794, el signo de gato y otra vez el signo de gato. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Mick. Uh, all right. Then uh, back to Helen. Okay, can you hear me? Yep, you've got five minutes. Go ahead, please, when you're ready. Gotcha. Um, just a, a real quick aside about, um, I commend you for having translators at this meeting um, and all the other meetings I've attended, that has not been an option. One of the reasons you may not have participation is that I was not aware at the time when I registered for this meeting or when I saw postings for this meeting that those materials were bilingual, nor was that there would be a translator available. So I wouldn't be surprised if you haven't gotten participation because that may not have been adequately advertised. So that's an aside. That's not my um, my comment is about um, actually <clears throat> the Route O four E option, um, and the reason that I um, highly support that option as opposed to the four D is it would only add five minutes to the entire route time, and it actually um, includes the the neighborhoods of Rams Edition and Capitol View. And I don't know how um, adequate bus service would to the south side would be uh, without. It, with just with excluding those two neighborhoods. So I highly recommend that. It also goes over and, and it's up along Pittsburgh, or I mean, um, what, Pittsburgh Road. So anyway, I, um, I highly support that option. I feel like um, a lot of this has been rushed. I think a lot of these low income, when, they, when the original redesign was proposed, um, I saw huge holes Welcome in- Welcome to AT&T Teleconference Service. Please enter your access code. Okay. Sorry. Um, anyway, so I, um, 
it was obvious that there were big holes. Please re-enter your exit. In both the north and the south um, sides of town and the east and west, um, not as much. So I think that that was a a huge um, hole and that we have been a very strong advocate for our neighborhoods. But I feel like maybe some of the other neighborhoods um, didn't realize uh, the bus service they were losing. For me um, to have to walk from my house to Park Street, catch a bus that's zipping by at 15 minute intervals is fine, but it's a half an hour walk for me. So I think our bus service throughout the neighborhoods on the rest of that O route and then 4D covers all those neighborhoods. I think it, it's essential and it needs to be main, it needs to be moved forward. I understand why D is the staff choice, but it only adds five minutes and it is the, um, the existing route that um, occurs and would, out, uh, would allow for adequate um, bus service, and I think that it's essential because we have 70% of the people in the South Madison use the bus as their primary source of transportation. So I think it's a real key area that needs to have bus service. And I was glad to see that the bus ridership was considered in the original surveys, but I haven't seen that um, compare that comparison of when the surveys were done and bus ridership and how that compares to bus people that were ru- Right, uh, bus dependent, I guess is the way I should say it, um, to these ex- the new routes. And especially for us on the south side where BRT is either may never happen or it's long for the future, we need to be maintaining as much local service as possible, especially if the goals of the city are to eliminate, um, you know, cars driving around. For a lot of people I've heard, well, if our bus route was eliminated, I'll have to drive. And that's not okay. And some of the, many of the people um, do not have that option and, and, or um, do not have the physical capabilities to be able to walk those distances to get to that park street. So um, I highly support that 4E. I would love to see this whole process kind of slow down to accommodate and ensure that we actually are equitably providing bus service throughout town. Um, not just um, the BRT routes, but those need to be, we need local bus service feeding to those um, BRT routes. So that's uh, what I wanted to say. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Helen. Uh, Alder Foster. Uh, thank you, Chair. Yeah, I just wanted to share that um, the council updated our procedures related to public hearing uh, time limits uh, just a, uh, maybe a month or two ago. Um, so we're actually, um, public hearings are like other items at this point, which are uh, three minutes instead of five minutes. So I'm thinking we should probably just go with the, the standard that the council adopted. Well, thank you, Alder Foster. I appreciate that. Okay, so we will then go to the three-minute um, time limit for speaking, um, unless there is any objection. Alder Harrington McKinney, go ahead, please. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, I want to clarify is that we are receiving public comment. We are not asking any questions of the um, of the present, not the presenters, but um, we're listening. But we're not actually asking any questions to the, the speaker. I just want to clarify that. Um, I, I don't see why we can't ask questions of speakers. Okay. So if you have a if you have a question for the speaker, I suppose now is a good time to ask while the speaker is here. Okay, thank you. You have a question for the speaker? No, I just wanted to clarify that we can, and that option was available because there's uh, uh, some changes in terms of council. But I just wanted to make sure that we're able to um, ask a question of a speaker if that um, if, we, if if that is allowed. Yes, thank you, Alder. I'll ask that at the end of each speaker's time. Uh, thank you for that reminder. Okay, um, let me just check here. All right, no more hands. All right, we'll then move on to our next speaker, uh, Sarah uh, Beauchere, uh, 314 North Baldwin, uh, Madison, Wisconsin, 53703, in opposition, wishing to speak. Sarah, I see you're ready. Hey, you've got three minutes, and you're ready. All right. All um, right. Hello, um, committee and staff. It is good to be with you tonight. Um, I am speaking as a uh, primary um, 
frequent bus rider um, and a person with disabilities, um, but I am also unofficially advocating on behalf of a lot of people who um, I don't think can be here tonight. Um, I like public speaking. Um, I like politics, but I know that everyone, well, a lot of people don't come to hearings. So uh, I'm thinking of myself as my voice and the voice of others. Um, this whole design, I know that there's been a lot of time and effort that's been put into it. Um, but how things are is it's just, it seems to be efficiency, um, really an efficiency model. And efficiency is good. Having, eventually having less cars in Madison is good. But there's a lot of different kinds of riderships. And um, the people who rely on the bus more are um, people of color, um, people in poverty, people with disabilities. And changing these routes to make them um, more um, not efficient, kind of not going into the neighborhoods as much, having it longer for people to walk, um, doing that, um, uh, I think, is going to be difficult for a lot of people. Um, whenever anybody saw the flyer when I was on the bus, um, Everyone I talked to just casually mentioned that they were against this. Um, so I think you have opposition. It's great to do things like eliminate the transfer points and make things go more smoothly. Um, but I really think that um, a lot of people will struggle with um, walking, uh, getting there, learning new routes very frequently. People ask the bus driver, where does this bus go? What is this? What is this? And I feel that there are a lot of riders who even now have no clue what's going on. Um, so I think it's very important to make sure that, you know, the carless, um, those who really rely on the bus routes, understand what's going on. Um, I do think amendments would be better at this point. Um, and I like the amendments that are there for the north and the east side. Um, and I. It's your time, like Sarah. The, thank you. Thank you. Um, is, are there any questions for the speaker? Seeing none. Oh, Alder Harrington McKinney, go ahead, please. Um, yes. Um, uh, the speaker indicated that, and that was, she indicated that she had. Um, um, I don't know if you said a disability and walkability. Could you say more than that? How are you? How are you navigating? How are you getting from point A to point B? Go ahead, Sarah. Okay. Um, yes, I, um, I. I do have a physical disability, um, and just um, walking long distances would be more difficult for me. Um, right now, I happen to have the uh, privilege of. Uh, living right across the street from a bus stop and having work drop me off practically in front of my work. Oh, was I not unmuted? Nope, we can hear you. Okay. Um, so that's um, what I think that um, the bus stops will take a longer time. Um, uh, for me, I'm lucky because I live close to an intersection, but for others um, who have more mobility issues than I do, um, I think that would be more of an issue. And just the fact that I don't drive and so the um, bus is my main, main route of transportation. Thank you, Chair. I'm complete. Thank you. And thank you, Sarah. Okay. Our next speaker then is uh, Helen Kitchell. I'm sorry. Helen has already spoken. Um, our, ne our, speaker, our next speaker then is uh, Ben Van Pelt, uh, 1808 West Beltline Highway, Madison, Wisconsin. Neither support nor in opposition wishing to speak, representing SSM Health. 
Thank you, Chair Wilson. Really appreciate that. And thank you to all the members of the uh, Transportation Policy and Planning Board uh, for being here tonight. And I just really want to say thank you to uh, the Metro staff and all the city officials for their, their work on the Metro redesign um, and for answering the plethora of questions uh, myself and our organization has had. Um, uh, as a quick introduction, my name is Ben Van Pelt. I'm the Director of Government Affairs for SSM Health here in Wisconsin. And as Chair Wilson already noted, I'm testifying tonight on behalf of my organization, and we will be asking for your support of Amendment 4D to the Metro Network Redesign Plan. Uh, I will note uh, that we recognize that Amendment 4E has also uh, been added that uh, that uh, kind of uh, um, solves our main concern, which is service on Fish Hatchery Road. But uh, that, that amendment was added uh, after our memo and testimony were put together, so we haven't had a chance to review it yet. Um, as the folks on this committee probably know, uh, SSM Health is a Catholic nonprofit health system. Uh, we have seven hospitals here in Wisconsin, including St. Mary's here in uh, the city of Madison. We have uh, 14,000 employees in Wisconsin and operate three clinics also within the uh, city of Madison city limits. Um, and then through Dean Health Plan, we cover nearly uh, a half million members across our entire system. Um, the TPB, P, TPPB members um, have already uh, uh, received our uh, policy memo and consideration, so I'll try to briefly summarize. But our main focus uh, with the Metro redesign is service on Fish Hatchery Road, as I already mentioned earlier. Uh, we operate a, a clinic, uh, our South Madison Campus Clinic at 1211 Fish Hatchery Road, which is just south of the corner of Fish Hatchery and Midland Street. Um, and as you all know, uh, through the presentation and other public comments, uh, the current plan eliminates all service on Fish Hatchery Road. Uh, we recognize and we hope the city recognizes that it's vital to retain public transportation access to health and health care related resources. And that's why we are supporting Amendment 4D and asking you to do the same. Uh, as of the drafting of our memo, it was the only amendment that added service uh, back in on Fish Hatchery uh, Road, and uh, that service is consistent and, and efficient. Uh, moreover, I just want to state that the city, um, in its uh, establishment of our approval for the, construct, uh, the construction of the South Madison Campus Clinic, put conditions on that approval. And one of those conditions was for us to build and maintain a bus pad and shelter just south of our clinic. Obviously, if uh, service is eliminated on Fish Hatchery Road, that pad and shelter will ultimately become useless. Um, so again, just want to reiterate that we are supporting Amendment 4D and, and we're asking uh, the board and members of the city council to do the same. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ben. You had four seconds to spare. Uh, <laughs> well done. Any questions for the speaker? Seeing none, um, we will move on then to uh, speaker Adrian uh, Trevis, um, I'll do my best to pronounce folks' uh, names. I apologize if I get something wrong. Uh, 6010 South Hill Drive, Madison, neither in support nor opposition, wishing to speak. Thank you very much. Um, ahead, to the, thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Thanks. It's Adrian Travis, and I'm a resident of the area that's between the proposed lines of H like Harold, Y like Yellow, A like Adam which the MTA plan uh, correctly identified as adversely affected by the proposed changes. Thank you, MTA, for acknowledging that our neighborhood will be adversely affected. Um, I'm, uh, I, I actually wanna commend the MTA for aiming for racial or um, ethnic equity, but I also wanna speak for another marginalized group that's heavily dependent on public transportation of which I'm a member, and that's individuals with disabilities. Uh, so the adverse effect on my neighborhood is going to entail uh, doubling or tripling walking distance. Uh, I have an impairment, it's a visual impairment. I don't drive anymore. So when I cannot bike to campus or downtown, I will be relying on the buses during inclement weather. and. Um, I would like to encourage a slowdown of this process to collect more data about commuting patterns uh, post pandemic, we hope, and during uh, winter and during periods of inclement weather to make sure that these changes aren't disadvantaging another marginalized group 
while searching for equity for uh, a very important group that shouldn't be disadvantaged. Uh, so what we're looking for here uh, are those creative compromises. Um, and let me just tell a brief anecdote that MTA canceled my main bus route, the 14 bus route, not long ago. Uh, I didn't receive notification, but that might be on me. I'm not sure if there were emails sent. Um, and it took a, gr a great deal of time to get home that day since the 14 was canceled. And that's the result of this proposed redesign, eliminating the bus that ran from a long regent from Whitney Way to Gammon approximately. And it's going to disservice a large number of uh, residential neighborhoods, many of which may contain individuals with disabilities. So I would suggest, recommend that a, a little more data be collected across Madison on the distribution of individuals with disabilities who rely on the bus system. If those data have not yet been collected, uh, or even if they have pre-pandemic, I think we need new information post-pandemic about disability. Um, so overall, I wanna commend MTA for thinking about equity, but I think uh, individuals with disabilities may have been uh, underrepresented in the data collection. And my area in particular is adversely affected by the proposed changes, which probably could be redressed by a north-south line between Old Sock and Mineral Point, or reinstating the east-west line that ran down Regent. Thank you very much. Thank you, Adriana. Are there any questions for the speaker? Uh, Margaret, go ahead, please. Yes, thank you very much for speaking this evening. Um, I'm recently Metro released a survey uh, and hoped that its audience would be people with disabilities. And I'm just curious, speaking of outreach, whether uh, you saw that and were able to respond to it. Yeah, thank you for that question. I filled out that survey. And by the way, I've also responded in writing twice to the um, invitations by MTA about this draft plan. I did fill out that survey. However, you should be aware that SurveyMonkey is not fully accessible to the visually impaired because it doesn't support many common text-to-speech applications. And therefore, it takes uh, two or three times as long to fill out for someone like myself. Um, if you'd like to reach out, I'm the former chair of the University Committee on Disability Access and Inclusion for the University of Wisconsin at Madison. As you know, many bus lines pass through there. So we discuss these sorts of issues about digital accessibility as well as transportation accessibility all the time. And we have members from among the students, the staff and the faculty. So I can uh, connect you to a very diverse uh, group of individuals interested and concerned about disability. Thank you for that question. Thanks for that answer. Hey, thank you. Um, then next up is uh, Deborah Mason, uh, 540 West Olin Avenue, uh, 325 Madison, Wisconsin, 53715, in opposition, wishing to speak. Um, hi, Deborah. Um, you've got uh, three Deborah's, minutes. You begin when you're ready. Deborah's ill this evening. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, then we will go to Patrick E. Jackson, um, 6637 Gettysburg Drive, Madison, Wisconsin, in opposition, wishing to speak. We have a Patrick Jackson. There's no Margaret, person in attendance by that name. Okay, thank you. Margaret, I still see your hand up. Did you have a... Okay. Um, all right. And we'll go to the next page here. Uh, next up then is Mick uh, Mully, 5402 Ladd Avenue, Madison, neither in support nor opposition, wishing to speak, um, representing the owner manager of Maple Glen Apartment Homes in the Saltdale neighborhood. We have Mick Mully. There's no person in attendance by that name. Okay, thank you. Um, next up then is Belmi Patricia uh, Meha. In opposition, wishing to speak at 200 Deer Valley Road, Madison, Wisconsin. We have Belmy. And there is no person in attendance by that name. Okay, thank you. Uh, next up then is Laura Green, uh, 1862 Beld Street, Madison. In opposition, wishing to speak. 
Hi, Laura. Um, hello. Um, thank you to the city staff and its consultants who have put so much time and resources into the Madison Metro redesign. I am the Grants and Communications Coordinator at the Catholic Multicultural Center, a social service agency on Madison South Side serving over 5,000 individuals each year. We have been closely following the redesign process because many of our guests rely on public transit as their primary or only transportation option. With the currently proposed draft plan presented for your approval this evening, we are one step closer to the harsh reality that our neighborhood, which is Brams Edition and Capitol View, will lose bus service. This decision that you hold in your hands will affect the lives of thousands of residents. Taking bus service away from a high concentration of low income, senior and disabled individuals who depend on the bus is an unacceptable sacrifice for improving bus service elsewhere. If anything, more resources should be invested into these neighborhoods to ensure that the people who most need this service continue to have easy access to the bus system. Furthermore, so many voices impacted by this decision have been missing from this discussion because the structures of the redesign process have created significant barriers to receiving input. Because Bram's addition neighborhood is, has a unique layout, most other residents would have a long walk to a bus stop on Park Street. It is a neighborhood comprising of 15 blocks, but has only four exits to Park Street. For example, a resident living on Baird Street would need to walk a minimum of one third of a mile just to reach Park Street. Though Amendment 4D um, staff are proposing to add back some bus service to the South Madison, but our guests and neighbors at the CMC would still lose out. It is very reasonable to request a route that serves all of the key vulnerable populations and service sites in South Central Madison via Fish Hatchery Road, Olin Avenue and through Bram's Edition and Capitol View neighborhood. The South Madison Planning Council proposed such a route via Amendment 4E, which was originally dismissed by city staff. Just a slight modification to the currently endorsed 4D, such as in 4E, would achieve the coverage that our neighborhood needs and deserves. We urge you to do what it takes to ensure that our neighbors do not lose bus coverage, and we want the same to be true for all vulnerable neighborhoods in Madison. The vast majority of the people we serve at the CMC lack the time and language, technology, and lobbying skills to speak up at a meeting such as this one. For those who cannot be here to speak up tonight, I speak for the dozens of guests at the CMC who express great concerns to us about the loss of bus coverage. On behalf of the remainder of the CMC staff, I urge you to adopt an amendment that brings back coverage to our neighborhood and other key sites through South Central Madison. Thank you, Laura. Are there any questions for the speaker? Seeing none, our next speaker is uh, Sloan Brown, uh, 1862 Feld Street, Madison, in opposition wishing to speak. Uh, Sloan, go ahead when you're ready. Uh, Sloan, you are unmuted on our your end or on our end. You may be muted on your end. There may be a mute button on your headset or on your computer. Now you are muted. And Zoom. Okay, so am I unmuted now? We can there hear you go. now. Okay. Um, as far as the over the overall plan, where you are uh, increasing the uh, frequency of runs, um, and you are running routes that are pretty much going throughout the whole city. Uh, the concentration downtown is a bit much. My biggest concern has to do with the neighborhood areas that uh, the addendums are supposed to address. Uh, when I first saw the, the the new setup and there weren't addendums and I asked about it, that apparently became the big thing. Um, the problem I'm seeing with some of these addendums coming out now is that you are setting them up to circle the neighborhoods that you're supposed to be serving and they're running along existing parts of the route you're going to be setting up, which just is redundancy you don't need. You need to be able to run those those addendums into the neighborhoods and back out to the to the the runs that are supposed to be the, the high frequency 
uh, runs that are supposed to get people around quicker. So if you're all you're doing is circling the neighborhoods on along those routes, you aren't helping people at all in those neighborhoods. And that's the biggest thing with this new setup is if you want it to work overall, you have to be able to get to the people at their homes as well. Not right like right out front the door, but you don't want to be, have to make them walk a third of a mile or more when they didn't have to before. This is supposed to serve the entire city, all of the citizens. Not just the ones who have the money and don't actually need it anyway, which is what the main corridor downtown is going to do. So we need to we need to have this plan cover the whole city in a reasonable manner. That's pretty much what I what I'm advocating for here. So you you have your high speed stuff going on on that's fine. You need these these uh, these smaller uh, in and out routes that can then get people from their homes to the routes that get things done quicker. If you don't do both, then you're not doing the system right at all in the first place. So that's my primary advocacy is, is uh, improve the system with respect to speed is, you know, as much as you can, but don't forget about the people actually having to be able to get to the system to use it. Because without that, the rest of the system becomes largely useless pretty much all I got to say. Thank you, Sloan. Are there any questions for the speaker? All right, seeing none. Our next speaker is Kim Owens, 1902 Londonderry Drive, Madison, Wisconsin, in opposition, wishing to speak. Uh, the chair, there's no person in attendance by that name. Thank you. Um, the next uh, person then is Susan uh, DeVos. 610 North Midvale Boulevard, Madison, in opposition, wishing to speak. Uh, Susan, hello, welcome. Uh, my name is Susan DeVos. I'm a senior disabled resident of Madison and a mainline bus rider who used to have to ride paratrans. I served for years on the now defunct ADA Transit Subcommittee of the Transit and Parking. Machine. To summarize my four points, one, hold off on any decision until there is a more coherent plan. Two, be honest about what the plan delivers. Everyone is aware the current system needs improvement. Three, Bring back having a senior or disabled voting member on all transportation oversight bodies. Four, give people a choice as to how to spend their transportation money. Don't decide for them. My main recommendation is that the current pseudo plan be put on hold and revisited when more coherent. The, that coherence would include an equity analysis and a simple overlay of maps of existing and planned service. Why the rush? We are now being asked to comment on a piecemeal, uncoordinated plan. That is not a reasonable use of the public's time or attention. Second, I recommend the redesign plan be honest. Honest about social equity, funding, accessibility, and sustainability. For instance, how honest is it to claim that adding a frequent BRT route from east to west at the expense of existing routes on the north and south improves social equity when the highest um, concentrations of non-student low income and transit dependent populations live on the north and south sides. How honest is it to dangle frequency as an option when frequency ends up being defined as every 30 minutes, similar to the current supposedly infrequent service 
now up every 30 minutes. Third, I recommend bringing back the requirement that a senior or disabled person be a voting member of any transportation oversight committee, especially if the one tasked with approving or this time, Susan, thank you. This network design. Are there any questions for the speaker? Alder Hanka McKinney, go ahead, please. Um, Susan, I, uh, you, we cut you off in the middle of your conversation. Um, did you have another statement that you wanted to add? Go ahead, Susan. Yes, I did, because I thought I had five minutes. Um, I emphasize that the ADA of 1990 is a civil rights law. Does Madison really want to feign ignorance of this fact? I also recommend that people be given a choice of how to spend their transportation money. Are they really okay with funding the new system at the pre-2019 wheels tax level after approving the added fee under the misguided belief that they would be quoting from the 219 Metro Ford Flyer, investing in fast, reliable, and accessible transportation. Thank you, Chair. I'm complete. Okay, thank you. All right, our next uh, registrant is Barbara. Bailey, 540 West Olin Avenue, Madison, in opposition, wishing to speak. Hello, Barbara. Yes. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Um, I was surprised to hear about the uh, um, five minutes that uh, I'm advocating for uh, option O, uh, uh, 4E. Uh, I was surprised to hear about um, if we uh, kept in the route that goes around uh, Graham's addition and Capitol View would take an extra five minutes because I've noticed, and I take the 13 a lot, that the 13 often gets to the south transfer point early and also uh, with the current detour away from Celery Hall and coming up, uh, I think it's Brooks, and then over on uh, West Johnson, uh, has also made it navigate that intersection a lot quicker. Makes it easier to catch, uh, let's say, number two going west. So I, um, I'm not so sure that uh, keeping uh, the routes running through Capitol View and Graham's addition uh, is going to take an whole extra five minutes. I feel like uh, people in Graham's addition and Capitol View are being asked to sacrifice and walk longer and further so that we can have BART. I filled out the survey before I knew about the uh, redesign. And um, if I had known uh, about the redesign when I filled out the survey, I would have filled it out differently. I think that uh, we should be able to keep Rams and Capital View and still be on time. That's it. Thank you, Barbara. Are there any questions for the speaker? Seeing none, our next registrant is Carrie Rothbard, 830 West Lakeside Street, Madison, in opposition, wishing to speak. Oh, and okay. thanks. I'm expressing the same thanks as everybody else for this opportunity to speak. 
When I left home at 2.30 today, the letters from the community intended for this body and for Metro were not yet up on Legistar. And I have to wonder what that means and how many members of the public were discouraged by that, or whether the members of TPPB have had the chance to read any of them. I did, I skimmed them, and they do make the point over and over again, by and large, that people are making tonight. I'm in South Madison, and here in South Madison, we felt so strongly about local bus access on the South Side that we called a meeting on 516 to, pre to present our proposed solution, 4E, to oppose 4D, which, as envisioned by transit, transit planners, as one letter writer, writer put it, pitted our neighborhoods against each other. We don't want to pit ourselves against each other. We work together as the South Side, and we feel that the only option is 4E. Despite this, we were told at the meeting that 4E was not an option when it later appeared among the other op amended routes, as someone pointed out, it was too late for many people to change their vote for 4E. Many people still don't even know that 4E exists. The second point that I saw made over and over again in the letters that we've talked about here on the South Side is that the ridership model works very well for the redesign of both uh, the existing transit routes um, and for elimination of routes in order to support the BRT along the east-west corridor. But coverage is needed in what the city itself talks about in its metro materials as the peripheral communities of color, those who are dependent on bus service, and yet this plan, as it now stands, would make the many in these communities face walks that exceed the stated new system average walk of a quarter of a mile. We've counted walks of as much as a mile in places, and certainly many half-mile walks, which might be nothing for an able-bodied person, but become something for someone who isn't as able-bodied as um, younger people or who feels compromised by walking on ice in winter. Um, this plan works against the benefit of the people for whom public transit is not an option, but a requirement. The ridership model contradicts the city's own stated goal of increasing equity. Instead, people in these communities stand to lose easy access to bus routes. To, I mean, the, the, the major routes, what may someday become a bus that's, route. That's time. That's time, Carrie. Thank you. Are there any questions for the speaker? Oh, I do have one. Oh, never mind. That's an attendee. Um, okay. Our next speaker, then, our next registrant is uh, Kirsten uh, Husselman. Uh, 2426 Equity Lane in Fitchburg, neither support nor opposition wishing to speak. Hi, Kirsten, welcome. Thank you. My name is Kirsten Huselman. I live in the Ally Drive, Duns Marsh neighborhood and was recently elected to represent District 27, which covers the northern part of Fitchburg on the Dane County Board of Supervisors. The changes in Metro um, redesign disproportionately affects historically disenfranchised and highly bus dependent areas of the Madison Metro area and Dane County District 27. I and many of the communities I now represent feel that the decisions being made in this redesign of bus routes have lacked important community outreach and engagement of those most impacted by these changes. Public transit is a vital public service. We should be making it more accessible to address environmental, economic, racial dis disability, housing, and other injustices experienced by far too many of our neighbors, not making it less equitable, which is the ultimate impact of this design redesign so far. Although none of these proposed amendments are 100% ideal for the affected Fitchburg communities, I do support the following proposed amendment. Amendment 16C which would mean more access within the neighborhood of the Southdale neighborhood um, in which the neighborhood themselves advocated for and was approved by the Fitchburg Common Council. 
Amendment 13, which provides stops on Genuine and Red Arrow in the Ally Drive Duns Marsh neighborhood. Amendment 17A, which would add stops to the Driversa neighborhood that was supported by the Fitchburg Common Council as well. And Amendment 14, which would provide services to the Fitchburg Senior Center and other Fitchburg City buildings. An important service for the area's aging community that was not supported in the Fitchburg Common Council. I urge you to listen to these communities, prioritize impact and equity over intent, and do better to represent those most impacted by these decisions. Thank you for your time and consideration on these matters. Thank you, Kirsten. Are there any questions for the speaker? Seeing none, our next registrant is Gloria Rees. 4002 uh, Tom Scott Trail, Madison, Wisconsin, in opposition, wishing to speak. Hello, Gloria, welcome. Hello, Hi, thank you. Thank you for your time. Um, I'm calling uh, to speak in opposition. I'm very concerned about uh, the rollout um, of the best rapid redesign. Um, I think there's a lot of equity uh, issues. Um, I am the CEO of Bar Apache Services. Um, it came to my attention that um, the bus stop that is currently located across the street from Bar Patch is no longer going to exist. Um, and this is when I started to um, look into uh, this, this process and the impact that this redesign is going to uh, Well, it looks like we lost connection. Here's Gloria. Hello, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Hello? Yep, we can hear you. Okay, great. I'm sorry about that. I don't know what... You know, as the Briar Patch CEO, I learned that um, the bus stop across the street uh, was no longer going to exist with this redesign. And um, and then as I started to look into it more, I mean, there's a clear equity issue with this process. Um, Briar Patch serves our most vulnerable youth um, in the city of Madison. And we... Um, we I went to a community meeting a couple of weeks ago, and it was... It was so sad to see our Latino families, our Black families, who were in this space trying to figure out how this was going to impact them. It was obvious to me that they have not been part of this process of engagement. We, um, this is going to impact how, to get, how they get to work. Um, and it, it, if anybody was there would have seen just how sad this was and how I questioned if this is the Madison um, that I currently live in, I mean, we talk about equity, 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 um, and everything that we do. But when it really, when rubber meets the road, it seems like we miss the mark. This is impacting our most vulnerable populations. And we're doing this process backwards. We should have done a racial equity and equity analysis to begin with. Anytime we change a policy, uh, when I served as deputy mayor, we ensured that an equity analysis was conducted um, before we made any policy changes. I keep asking the question, where is this racial or this equity analysis? How is this um, policy change going to impact and have unintended consequences for our most vulnerable populations, our Black, Latino, our dis disabled uh, community? Um, those are the questions we should be asking with this process. So when we talk about how we're trying to limit the time to get to work, um, you know, uh, for people and how we throw out the word equity, but then at the end, it really is not. And, and for who, right? Who is this um, rapid redesign for? 
Um, and that's the question. Sorry, I Gloria, I that is time. Um, are there any questions okay. for the speaker? Okay, thank you. Alder Harrington McKinney, go ahead, please. Uh, yes, Gloria, are you still there? Yes, I am. Um, tell me how many um, students uh, does uh, RIPAT serve on a, can you give me a, like a daily basis or an annual basis, an idea of the impact of removing that stop from in front of bar patch? It, it varies. Um, I would have to say about 3,000 um, a year, um, and but it varies. Um, and we also have families who use the bus, parents who come to Briar Patch. Um, and so I would say on a typical week, we're seeing kids coming and going from school, uh, you know, 10. Um, and, you know, and parents, along with parents, it's just, um, yeah, so it's going to have a significant impact on our children. Okay. Thank you. Do you have evening activities there as well? You mentioned coming to and from school. Do you have evening activities that would be impacted as well? Yes, we do have evening activities. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. All right, thank you. Randy, go ahead, please. Yes, uh, Gloria, yeah, you're yes. still there, correct? Hi. Yes, it's I am. Randy Udell. Uh, the, the amendment that we, City Council of Pittsburgh, passed last week, uh, 16C, that should correct what you're referencing, correct? As far as uh, passing um, your facility, Briar Patch? It's not going to, from my understanding, it's not going to stop. It's going to, it's going to change. The bus stop is going to change. It's not yeah, going to. Instead of in the front, it's probably going to be the rear elevation or in that direction. Correct. I, I, I'm just, I just want to point out that I believe no. that, that was here for the issue. So uh, I just wanted, wanted your body. Yeah. I thought, I thought it was going to change, but it was going to be like three blocks away. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Randy. Uh, Justin, go ahead. I, I just wanted to add, yes, the, um, the 16C would bring uh, service down Innovation Parkway just behind Briar Patch, so we would anticipate adding a stop there. Um, that would be basically equidistant to the current stop. Thank you, Justin. All right, our next speaker um, is Masaru Oka. 301 South Yellowstone Drive, uh, apartment 115, Madison. Um, neither in support nor opposition wishing to speak. We have uh, a, um, here we go. Hi, are you able to hear me? Yes, we can. Great. Uh, so my name is Masaru Oka. Uh, I have lived here in Madison for about 11 years without a car. Uh, just to be clear, I am not part of any disadvantaged groups. Uh, I am one of those people who chooses to ride the bus, and I certainly could buy a car, but I've chosen not to. And so I think I'm uh, kind of a, a slightly different constituent than uh, most of the other people who have spoken so far. Uh, but for me, Using the bus uh, has been an important part of my identity, and bus access has been very important uh, in choosing where I live. Uh, so I've chosen apartments that are very close to a bus line so that I can get to work easily. Uh, but I did live at one house where I had to bike a mile just to get to the bus to get to work. And most people, if they were facing that choice, they would just buy a car. And so with this redesign, I know because of some of our constraints, there are going to be people who are farther from a bus stop. And even if the total trip time is shorter, if it takes too, far, too long to get to the bus stop, they're not going to continue using it. So that last mile, I think, is an issue that we do need to address. And honestly, the way that I think we have to do that is by removing that constraint on how much money we spend on Metro. Transportation is something that's very important to the city, not just for bus riders, but also drivers. 
And if we can spend more money on the bus system, we can add more coverage, we can help these people who are dependent on the bus. I did see uh, in some of the analysis that there are a number of, uh, I think, housing facilities on the west side um, where there are higher concentrations of people dependent on the bus. And I saw uh, quite a few of those which are going to be significantly farther from a uh, bus stop. Uh, I don't know if the amendments help with those. Uh, personally, I do support Amendment 6A, which will add uh, service back to the Old Sock area. I did see quite a few people uh, complaining about uh, the buses being taken away in the original redesign uh, on next door. So I'm glad about that. Uh, and I am also uh, a little con concerned about the equity analysis. Uh, although it showed that it was uh, pretty even, the low income part uh, included UW students who aren't really, I think, uh, a community that we need to be as concerned about because the people who live downtown are already served by many bus routes. So if we can take out university students from that equity analysis, I think we get a better picture of how that's impacting uh, low income populations. Thank you. All right, thank you. Are there any questions for the speaker? All right, seeing none, our next speaker is Josh Jenkins, 2609 County Rose Court, Madison, in opposition, wishing to speak. Hello, Josh, welcome. Hello, can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can. Uh, go ahead when you're ready. All right. Uh, well, I appreciate the uh, opportunity to speak. Um, have emailed pretty extensive comments about, um, you know, what the neighborhood of Southdale faces, which, um, you know, was made clear in the city of Fitchburg last week. And glad to see that there are people here who can speak to that. Um, specifically, want to talk about again the the. Uh, equity analysis, including university students and its determination that um, low-income people are going to see longer walk to the bus, but be in closer proximity to high frequency of buses. And I'll, I'll be honest, this feels like a sleight of hand to cover what really seems like um, both an equity analysis and real meaningful outreach to low-income communities has been just non-existent. And to give one anecdote here in in the Southdale neighborhood, you know, we're in the town of Madison, which held zero public meetings. Metro held zero public meetings. Our service is in one of two neighborhoods that has the highest uh, percentage of people of color in the service area and 16 stops serving close to a thousand people a week. And the draft plan proposes to cut all of that and make the walking distance about 10 blocks to get to that stop. So I support amendment 16 C. It's a new amendment this week. It's the only one that conserves uh, service to our neighborhood. Um, just to be clear that that's the, the amendment that, that we're pushing for. We also support 4E um, in Bram's addition and Amendment 13 in the Allied Drive neighborhood. Also, we need to reevaluate Route O on the north side, which isn't going to serve the uh, Northport residents any better than um, previous amendments. But, um, you know, specifically, the outreach has been heavily English only tonight. The interpretation is uh, possibly acceptable, although we're not hearing it in general. Um, I can tell you that a lot of our neighbors, about half of the people that have shown up to testify in past meetings have been uh, Spanish speakers. Um, you called some of their names tonight, but I do not blame people for not being able to get to this meeting not feeling like they're going to be heard and not feeling like interpretation services are going to be adequate. 
Um, the outreach in this neighborhood has been terrible. Like I, like I referenced, Town of Madison held no meetings. Um, only when neighbors showed up at a meeting about the Fitchburg annexation, um, pretty upset about bus service being cut, did Metro schedule a public uh, appearance in Southdale. They noticed the meeting on May 9th and the meeting was May 11th. And that was the first time we've had a chance to weigh in about our service. So this whole plan, the outreach, the low income neighborhoods, <clears throat> the equity analysis that lumps in generationally uh, impoverished families with uh, college students downtown, all of these issues are um, something that really should stop this redesign in its tracks. Uh, like previous speakers, Lawyer Reyes mentioned, that kind of equity analysis needed to be undertaken at the very beginning. So this plan appears to be kind of a sleight of hand to sidestep um, the outcry that's rightfully going to come from low-income neighborhoods that are going to see their service cut if the original draft plan is approved. The amendments that I mentioned, 16 right, Josh, that's time. Thank you. Um, are there any questions for the speaker? Seeing none, um, we'll, our next registrant is Jay Allen, 1502 Greenway Crossing, Madison, Wisconsin, in support, wishing to speak. Hello, Jay, welcome. Uh, Jay, you may, uh, should be seeing him, there you go. There we go. All right, found it, sorry about that. I'm actually driving back to town right now, so I apologize. Uh, I'm Jay Allen. I'm a member of the Fitchburg City Council. And last week, our city council voted unanimously in favor of Amendment 16C. Uh, unfortunately, I, I agree with many of the points Josh just made about the, the outreach being inadequate for this neighborhood. Um, and honestly, Fitchburg was unaware of some of the issues going on until about a month and a half ago. So in that time, we've done everything we can to try to uh, understand the needs of the neighborhood, the way the situation, the way it's been, and how these changes are going to affect them. Uh, there's, there's a number of people I've learned in this neighborhood. Among Yes, there's a lot of Spanish-speaking people who are having trouble attending the meetings because the translation services have been inadequate. But we've also had a lot of disabled people speak up and talk about the difficulty in trying to walk, you know, in trying to just move more than four or five blocks to a bus stop. So Fitchburg has said that we are willing to pay for this. It's going to add a couple of minutes to the, to the length of Route 16. But we're willing to pay for it because it's, because it's important to our residents to have that service. So as this continues to move through the process, I would just ask that you would support Amendment 16C so that uh, we can work toward getting better service for the residents in our neighborhoods. Thanks. All right, thank you, Jay. Are there any questions for the speaker? Seeing none, our next registrant is uh, Gabriela Gerhardt. Uh, 64 Woodbrook Way, Fitchburg, uh, neither in support nor opposition, wishing to speak. Hi, can you hear me? Gabriella? Yes, we can. Go ahead when you're ready. Hi, thank you. My name is Gabriella Gerhart. I am a alder in the city of Fitchburg. I also sit on the Transportation and Transit Committee uh, in Fitchburg, so I've been following this process from the outset. I'm here today to in support of the Fitchburg amendments that were passed last week. But, um, there were four different amendments. Um, you've heard a couple of people talk about 16C. That is absolutely vital, and it's a new um, route through South Dale that we created last week in, in collaboration with Madison Metro. Um, the other one that is absolutely key is Amendment 13, which brings Route D2 into the, um, the Belmar Allied Drive neighborhood. Um, that is absolutely essential as well. And then two other ones that, uh, that, that we support are Amendment 15, which brings Route Z um, partway, halfway to the UW campus. And then also um, Amendment 17A, which brings Route Z into the Terra Vesa neighborhood. Um, I, you know, these are the amendments I hope you'll support uh, to make the system better. I would like to say, though, that I have a lot of concerns. I'm going to mirror a lot of what people have said. 
I followed this process at the beginning, um, but I do think that there were a lot of people that were left out just by the virtue of the fact that it happened during the pandemic. People, there are a lot of people that I've spoken with on the phone that do not have internet access um, and that didn't have access to it, especially during the pandemic because of their, their limitation um, because of because of the virus. So there were a lot of people that were left out of the of, of, out of person mindset. Um, and then now that the draft map has been released, that's when people really understand the impact. And then, but we're always we're working to adjust that that imperfect draft map. So it's there are people that are thinking, and they rightfully so. Um, and so I hope that these amendments pass. Uh, you know, there's a lot of great ones through the individual neighborhood, but I do wonder how many people haven't had a chance to weigh in on a draft amendment because they didn't even know that this is happening. They may not really realize what this means. Um, so. Assuming that this passes and that there's no way to stop the process, I think we need to be really intentional about outreach once it's final and be really specific with people that these bus stops are going away. Here's how to learn how the system works so that you can navigate it because people are going to have to make housing decisions. I mean, it is already impossible to find affordable housing in Dane County. Uh, and the people are already strapped because of, uh, because of the pandemic. Um, I I'm very concerned about the impact, but I think we need to be really, really, really intentional about providing people with services and being clear about what the reality is, assuming that this passes, assuming that this cannot be slowed down in any way. Thank you. Thank you, Gabriela. Are there any questions for our speaker? All right, seeing none, our next registrant is Denise Jess. 829 Jennifer Street, Madison, neither in support nor opposition, wishing to speak, representing the Wisconsin Council of the Blind and Visually Impaired. Uh, Denise? Yep, I am here. Good evening, Chair and um, members of the board. Thanks so much for this opportunity to talk with you tonight. Um, I want to first commend these efforts to establish more equity in our public transportation system. And as I'm doing that, I also want to note the challenges of doing a uh, equitable <laughs> equity analysis um, regarding people with disabilities. So as we've heard tonight from some of the other speakers, folks with disabilities, myself included, live throughout the city of Madison. And a lot of the equity data is dependent on self-reporting and having the opportunity to even self-report. And the reality is that any one of us at any time can become a person with disability. So the um, Metro redesign has significant impact for people with disabilities. Some will be advantaged by the route changes and some will be disadvantaged. And so the couple of concerns that I wanted to raise that have come to my attention from our constituents as I speak with them is, first of all, the folks that have a longer travel distance to a bus stop are very fearful that um, this will push them into needing to use paratransit. Paratransit, while it is there um, as a supplement for people with disabilities who cannot use fixed route systems, the paratransit in um, the city of Madison is under uh, it really needs to be scrutinized, reevaluated, and looked at because it is not a functional system for folks who need to get to work on time, who need to be at doctor's appointments on time, um, and folks are often very fearful that they will lose their um, employment because of using paratransit, so do whatever they can to avoid it. The other thing that folks have voiced is with longer walking distances needing to do more street crossings. Street crossings for those of us with disabilities, uh, whether it's vision or we're using mobility devices, is one of the most um, dangerous day-to-day -day activities that we experience. So um, my invitation is to really look at how are we measuring equity when it comes to the needs of people with disabilities. I haven't seen the results of the questionnaire. I appreciate that that questionnaire went out, but I haven't seen any results from it. So I'd be really interested to know what, how folks responded to that and how are we really measuring equity for people with disabilities. And then assuming that this passes, we have to do some pretty serious infrastructure 
um, an evaluation of our paratransit system, making sure that we have walkable, um, accessible street crossings um, on our walk routes to the bus stops. And we also really need to invest in travel training so that people can learn um, the new system. So um, that is it for me this evening. And again, thank you so much for this opportunity and thanks for all the work that has gone into this effort thus far. Uh, thank you, Denise. Any questions for the speaker? Seeing none, our next registrant is John Beeman, 540 West Olin Avenue, Madison, Wisconsin, neither in support nor opposition, wishing to speak. Chair, there's no person in attendance by that name. Okay, thank you. Uh, next registrant is Royce Williams, 2206 West Lawn Avenue, Madison, neither in support nor opposition, wishing to speak. Hello, Royce, welcome. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I put down that I do not support or <clears throat> or in favor of the current system because I don't think we have enough information to make that determination. And I think we need to do three things. One is we need to co come up with a final plan. I think Mike said there were something like 17 amendments. You guys need to decide which amendments are coming in and which ones are going out. So we come up with a final plan. And uh, and then we, we're looking ahead to the alders having to approve this plan. But unfortunately, they're giving the alders almost no time to do that. Uh, because I think that the design team needs to go back to the the um, to the um, ride guide in August twenty nineteen and write down how people were going to be able to migrate to different route in the new system because it is it's quite a struggle for an older person like me to tell what the new route equivalent is going to be to the one uh, for for an old route, you know, I'll give you an example. Um, I live off Monroe Street, and actually Monroe Street is doing fairly well on this. But we take the bus downtown all the time, and it's unclear from the maps as to what we're going to do with the BRT. We are going to, are we going to have to transfer to the BRT to complete the seven, the um, equivalent of the seven route. And there are a number of routes that run, old routes that run through the University Avenue border. And I, I'm very unclear as to how they're going to be handled. And so, what I'm suggesting is that we need to go through with the older routes and and actually indicate how they're going to be handled on the new system. These routes, the old routes, were put together over the years, and they have all kinds of refinement. It's very difficult for computer models to 
plug all these things in to come up with a new plan. Sorry, Royce, but that, that's time. Um, do we have any questions for the speaker? Seeing none, our next registrant is Rebecca uh, Soberman, um, 1033 High Street, Madison, Wisconsin, in support wishing to speak. Chair, there's no person in attendance by that name. Thank you. Our next registrant is uh, Brian Gehring, 902 uh, Kotke Drive, Madison, Wisconsin, in opposition wishing to speak. Uh, hello, Brian. Welcome. Hello. Yep, we can hear you. Okay. Um, I am opposition um, of this. Um, I think we don't have enough information. Um, one thing that greatly concerns me is there is no longer any bus service to the um, mall. You have to walk across the mall parking lot. Um, I mean, if you're disabled or in a wheelchair, you know, the parking lot gets icy and stuff. Then what are you um, going to do? Um, the other thing is that um, I, I, I agree about the transfer points taking too much time. But I don't know if this redesign... Oh, is the way to go about it. Um, I have missed my bus at the West Transfer Point. Um, and that's what I have to say. Thank you, Brian. Any questions for the speaker? Uh, seeing none, our next registrant is Caitlin Eunice. Uh, 2609 County Rose Court, Madison, in opposition, wishing to speak. Yeah, hi. Um, my name is Caitlin Eunice, and I'm a resident of the Southdale neighborhood. And um, I'm mostly here to urge you to support Amendment 16C, the one that most impacts my neighborhood, but also um, here in support of Amendment 4E and Amendment 13. Um, as you probably already know, the Southdale neighborhood is um, a fairly isolated, if not highly isolated neighborhood, and is home to predominantly low income and black and brown um, adults and families. Uh, all of our kids in our neighborhood, um, elementary through high school, take at least a 30 minute bus ride to get to school each day because we don't have a neighborhood public school. So even if you maintain our stops for the dedicated school bus routes, this redesign will impact youth um, who are starting school late and those who attend extracurricular activities and school events um, after hours. Those who depend on the bus, um, and it is many of us in this neighborhood, use it to go grocery shopping because there's no neighborhood grocery store, to get to work, to go to the laundromat, to go virtually anywhere else um, that they would need to go. Despite 15 years of development in our neighborhood, very little development in this neighborhood is actually for this neighborhood. So almost all of our needs require us to go to other parts of town. So I think one of the things that this redesign assumes is that an accessible walk for residents to get to a bus stop um, is actually fundamentally inaccessible to people with disabilities, to families moving around with young kids, to elders, um, people carrying bags of groceries or laundry, anyone who feels unsafe walking alone at night um, along poorly lit streets with little to no other activity on them. Uh, I think to further demobilize the residents of the Southdale neighborhood um, and any of the other low income neighborhoods that are losing coverage is, is hugely unjust. Um, so I urge you to support Amendment 16C and continue the basic service that we all in this neighborhood rely on. Um, I also urge you to pause the process uh, for the redesign until you can find effective ways to gather and honor the feedback of Madison and Fitchburg's most impacted communities. Um, that's all I wanted to share, but I know um, my daughter, Amina, also registered to speak, but she would be speaking um, on my Zoom. So I just wanted to share that as well in case she's up next. Thank you. Thank you, Caitlin. Are there any uh, questions for the speaker? Seeing none, um, our next registrant is um, Amina Yunus, uh, 
2609 County Rose Court, Madison, Wisconsin, in opposition wishing to speak. Um, as we just heard from Caitlin, likely using the same same Zoom account. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. My name is Amina Yunus, and I live in Southdale neighborhood and do not have any grocery stores, no schools, no laundry mats. So many people in my neighborhood need to ride the bus to go on walks and just to get out of the house. Why do you think about taking the bus service away? Please do not take the bus service. Thank you. Thank you, Amina. Uh, do we have any questions for the registrant? All right, seeing none. Our next registrant is Barbara Smith, uh, 456 North Few Street, Madison, neither in support nor opposition, wishing to speak. Uh, good, good evening. Thank you. Hello, Barbara. Um, good evening. Thank you. Um, the, uh, a large employer is the state of Wisconsin who has a lot of employees, in, especially in some concentrated areas. And um, it's really hard to say how uh, things will be once we, quote, get back to normal, because right now um, the state of Wisconsin has allowed a great deal of remote work. And um, so I think I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about a redesign in the middle of this uncertain period, because right now a lot of these big state office buildings are not fully uh, utilized. And I can't believe that's going to be the long-term plan. So um, state employees would be um, a really key rider group to add stability to the system. Um, I heard secondhand within the past couple of weeks that um, the, um, the state of Wisconsin hasn't really uh, talked about offering the type of employer subsidized bus passes that city and county employees have that and and that has helped drive a lot of um transit ridership so anyway i think that there's a lot more potential um to anyway to to get state employees riding and we won't know exactly how to do that because the current situation is not really the long term situation um let's see i work on the off the Capitol Square, a few blocks off the Capitol Square. So I'm alarmed at the <clears throat> few buses that would be serving the Capitol Square. Um, I think um, I've lived without a car for many years. And so I'm a heavy bus user. And um, um, I, I do think that there's a strong argument for keeping some of the not cutting as much of the service. Um, so I would like to see more funding come in uh, so that these types of cuts uh, are not necessary. Um, one I noticed, another one is the Amendment 10 Route E that would bypass the UW Hospital. Um, so I don't know if I misunderstood that, but I don't think a bus that stops on University Avenue is as good you know, if you're having to go to the hospital, because then that increases the hike that you have to make in order to get to the hospital. It's quite a quite a little adventure. And, you know, some of those people are sick because they're going to the hospital. So um glad that you um, proposed restoring some peak service to Sherman Harris and also some service to pick and save. But I guess my main contribution is to say um, you know, the Capitol Square is, is a, you know, this, this, we want long-term stability for the system. So we really want a lot of riders of the type that used to be downtown office workers or that type of people who could ride day after day, um, and, um, be part of a great network system. So I hope that, um, that can be re-examined. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Barbara. Are there any questions for the speaker? Seeing none, our next registrant is uh, Ivani uh, Twinge, 
um, 115 South Franklin, Madison, Wisconsin, neither in support nor opposition wishing to speak. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Welcome. Okay, thank you. Good evening. Um, thank you for your time. My name is Yvonne Schwinger. I'm a dependent bus rider and I do not drive. I've been using the Madison bus system for 20 years. I'm very concerned with the proposed network redesign as the funding is insufficient for maintaining adequate service. The large resources needed for operating the BRT are negatively impacting the rest of the network. I do not think the network redesign should be approved until adequate funding is secured. If additional funding is not possible, resources should be reallocated from the BRT to the rest of the system so areas that currently have service will continue to have access to public transportation. All the staff recommended amendments are necessary, as without them, many areas of Madison that currently have service will have it removed. I was surprised to learn recently that one of the proposed funding methods for the amendments is to reduce evening and weekend service. For years, riders have been asking for an increase in evening and weekend service. The evening and weekend service is a crucial part of the system that serves all riders, not just commuters with a weekday 9 to 5 job in one of the larger employment centers. Although the BRT will provide more frequent and perhaps faster service, it is not helpful if the beginning and end of a rider's trip is not on the same BRT line, as transfers will be necessary and longer walks may be required. If the needed transfers to a bus that only operates one time per hour, in effect, the passenger has hourly service. It doesn't matter if the BRT runs every 15 minutes if a rider has the time their arrival to a transfer to an only hourly bus. Neighborhood routes and the routes in the amendment should have a frequency of at least 30 minutes to make the frequency of the BRT effective. In particular, I support Amendment 6A. Part of this amendment includes Route R, which follows the path of the currently very heavily used Route 15. It provides 30-minute service during peak times, hourly during the midday and evening, and the Route 68 provides access to this area on weekends. The proposed amendment only provides hourly service and only until 8 p.m. with no service on weekends. The significant reduction in service is similar to many of the other amendments. I am also not sure why in Amendment 6A this route is included with Route Y, as that route requires funding from Middleton. At what point will funding from Metro partners such as Middleton, Fitchburg, Monona, Sun Prairie be secured? Will this affect which amendments get approved? If there will be an impact, I think Route R should be separated into an individual amendment. I appreciate all the time and work that has gone into the network redesign. However, I'd like to remind the decision makers that every change, especially elimination of current service areas and reduction of hours directly impacts riders, especially riders like me that are dependent. If the bus doesn't go there, I can't get there. If additional funding is not available to restore adequate service to areas proposed for elimination or reduction, then a rebalancing of coverage and frequency needs to happen. Riders in all area of town will be unfairly impacted if resources are not better balanced. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ivani. Um, any questions for the speaker? Seeing none, our next registrant is Gregory Evanson. 217 Deer Valley Road, Madison, in opposition, wishing to speak. Hello, Gregory, welcome. Thank you. Uh, um, I was interested, uh, I was found that a lot of the numbers initially presented interesting, um, that it almost seems like the way you intend to improve some of your numbers in terms of um, black and brown people having to transfer um, to improve the numbers by simply eliminating those routes and therefore taking them out of the equation altogether. Um, I live on Deer Valley Road. My wife is uh, uh, handicapped and she cannot uh, even think about uh, trying to reach some of the uh, proposed bus stops. I'm, I'm very glad that uh, Jay Allen spoke and that uh, Fitchburg seems to be very forward thinking about the buses. We, you know, we have over 800 families that live in my neighborhood and to simply eliminate bus service 
to all of those families in the interests of this rapid transit, it, which doesn't seem that it's serving, certainly not serving the low income neighborhoods in Madison. I don't know how we can avoid that conclusion when we see the plans that are just eliminating all of these neighborhoods. It's, it's just unconscionable. Um, so I hope you will reconsider the routes that run on Deer Valley Road for, for us, please. Um, because this, the plan, the way it sits now is just, it's not serving the people. And, uh, I will thank you for your time. Thank you, Gregory. <clears throat> Any questions for the speaker? All right, seeing none, our next registrant is Patrick Fox, 540 West Poland Avenue, Madison, neither in support nor opposition wishing to speak. Here, I believe that Patrick Fox is at the uh, yep. streaming. So is this Patrick? Uh, it's actually John Beeman. Okay. Um, Hello, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, first of all, in principle, I support the redesign and the BRT, but uh, uh, there do obviously many equity issues have been brought up, and uh, uh, those have been eloquently expressed by others, so I won't go into detail there. Um, I do want to make sure, it appears from the amendments that uh, Route O is going to be a part of the, uh, uh, the redesign, and I just want to, can that be confirmed for me, the Route O is in fact going, going to be a part of the redesign? Uh, I, uh, because uh, I, I'm a, I am a re resident of uh, uh, Romulus Apartments, and I'm a senior. Many of our uh, fellow, my fellow residents are seniors, and a fair number, I think, uh, are physically challenged in one way or another. And we really need to have something that can take us down from where we are to Park Street, uh, so that we can uh, access the rest of the city. I don't own a car. I think many of my fellow residents don't own a car, and I don't want to. I support mass transit, and I want to use mass transit. Uh, as for the alternative, I would support 4, 4E because it covers all, all the neighborhoods of South Madison, and since it only ends at most five minutes, that seems very little uh, to worry about. So I would support 4E. Um, I guess those are the major points I want to make. Uh, and I thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions for the speaker? Seeing none, our next registrant is Matt uh, Bratter, 2906 Stevens Street, Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, support wishing to speak. Am I on? Yes, you are, Matt. Welcome. Great. Uh, thanks, y'all, for this opportunity to be here. Uh, so I'm a resident of the Sunset Village neighborhood. Uh, Got to be honest, my comments aren't as profound as a lot of the others. I really just have one simple ask in a, in a slight change to an amendment, if it's still possible at this point. Uh, and I got to say, it's a change that at, at face value seems, seems pretty straightforward. Uh, so the amendment that I'm here to talk about adjustment to is Amendment 10 for Route E, uh, in which I'm, I'm really looking at a, a two-block route adjustment here. So the current draft plan for Route E shifts what's the current routing of Route 8 from Franklin, Franklin Avenue to Ridge Street. And what I would ask is that if Amendment 5 passes and Amendment 10 is coming up for recommendation, uh, that the board just take a second look at that routing of E and move it back uh, from, Frank, or from Ridge Street to Franklin Avenue. Uh, so the main reason for this is just the infrastructure on, Riv, on Ridge Street needs really significant upgrades. Uh, and it's not exactly untrafficked as it is, especially for pedestrians. So every morning when I go to work, I see kids wait in the street uh, during rush hours for their school bus pickup. And Ridge is really the main entry point for near West Side residents who are walking over to the Shorewood Pool and Crossing University Ave there. But uh, with, in with the infrastructure, Ridge Street doesn't even have sidewalks, uh, doesn't even have curb and gutter, which means that all pedestrians walking down those blocks right now need to walk into the street. Uh, so previously, it was sort of indicated by staff in public involvement meetings that Ridge was the necessary routing in order for Route E to make that westbound, sorry, eastbound left turn into the UW Hospital Loop. 
But if this amendment passes without the E making that turn, uh, I would just again ask that uh, we we look at that alignment and the way that that lines up to move it back to Franklin, where there's already pedestrian infrastructure in place. So I realize it's just you know a short little uh, three block connection for this route, but it seems possible to change um, from a street with a complete lack of pedestrian infrastructure uh, and maintain those current route eight stops for the route E while still allowing that route E to overlap the BRT stops where it stops there on Highland and U or on Ubay Drive specifically. I just want to say, so as a newer resident to this neighborhood, it also honestly seems a little wild to me that any neighborhood so close to downtown just doesn't have sidewalks. Um, but that's the decision of other committees, other departments to address. And so in the meantime, uh, I do have to say it also seems a little wild to me that we would route buses down streets without sidewalks this close to downtown, especially when there's no improvements or uh, restructure of the street planned. And when there's an existing sort of feasible route, just a block or two away. Uh, so again, I don't know if it's if it's in the game plan at this time, impossible to make amendments to the amendments. Uh, but I would encourage that small adjustment to Amendment Ten uh, to prioritize, continue to prioritize safe pedestrian access to the route. So thank you. Well, thank you, Matt. Are there any questions for the speaker? Seeing none, our next registrant is Kevin Pomeroy, uh, 4129 Iroquois Drive, Madison, in support, wishing to speak. Hello, Kevin, welcome. Many thanks uh, for hosting the public hearing. Uh, I'm the president of the Crawford Marlboro Nacoma Neighborhood Association, uh, which was formed in 2016 to bring three neighborhoods together and complete the city's neighborhood association's map. Uh, transit has been a primary focus of our organization during the pandemic. Uh, the neighborhood strongly supports uh, Amendment 7 to the draft plan. Uh, the, lo uh, the loss of Route 19 at the beginning of the pandemic was a huge problem since many new and long-term residents rode the bus to work and school and moved here for that transit access. Uh, in response to the loss of neighborhood transit during the pandemic, um, our neighborhood association hosted uh, focus groups, community meetings, and Zoom uh, meetups. Uh, we were very disappointed with the 2021 ridership and coverage uh, draft alternative transit networks as both removed service from the Coma Road, as did the draft plan. Uh, the uh, draft plan indicates about half of the uh, Crawford, Marlboro, and Coma neighborhoods uh, will be considerably further from service than we were with the former Route 19. Uh, the increase in distance. Uh, uh, from bus services about three-eighths of a mile to over a half a mile uh, 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 with the draft plan. Seniors and riders uh, with disabilities in our neighborhoods will have great difficulty with the longer walks to bus service. Uh, add inclement weather to the mix, and it's really a formula for uh, reduced ridership and not the increased ridership uh, that is anticipated with the draft plan. We know that the draft plan is constricted uh, as it is, you know, uh, considering it's based on current funding levels. Um, although in the future, the city needs to allocate more funding uh, for improved bus service for all residents, as, as many people have said this evening. Um, as part of the plan, we need to improve uh, connectivity between bike routes, uh, bus routes and bus stops, um, you know, with additional bike racks, e-cycle and pedestrian amenities. Uh, so Amendment 7 moves Route D2 from Odana and Midvale to Nakoma. Uh, this change replaces part of the service area that was covered by, uh, by uh, Route 19 prior to the pandemic. Uh, we are pleased that, uh, that the staff recommends Amendment 7 and the neighborhood and the Crawford Marlboro Nakoma Neighborhood Association strongly supports uh, this change uh, to the draft plan. Uh, we thank the staff and consultants uh, for the public participation that was held during uh, during this process and, and the careful consideration um, of neighborhood input. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Are there any questions for the speaker? Seeing none, our next registrant is Cassandra Steiner, uh, 2011. Atwood Avenue, Madison, Wisconsin, uh, neither in support nor opposition wishing to speak. 
Hi, thank you so much. Public transportation is really important to me uh, as a public transit rider myself. Um, my husband and I share one vehicle between the two of us. And so for commuting to the office, um, as well as um, getting around, if one of us have, has plans, transit's really essential for us. And then professionally, I also work with transit advocates. And so the stories that we're hearing tonight um, are unfortunately not uh, new to me and probably aren't, aren't new to many of you. So I hope that you um, heed them moving forward. I live on Atwood Avenue, and so my neighborhood is really well served. That's part of why I chose to live here. Um, and in the redesign, we will continue to be well served, uh, if not better served. And that's a concern when the north and south sides and parts of the west side are going to be worse off under this plan. It's really well known that changes to our transit system are necessary. There are a lot of um, good ideas behind this plan. So increasing access to jobs and using that as a metric of success, simplifying routes so that they're easier to understand for riders, especially new riders or people um, from other cities in Wisconsin that don't have transit systems. Bus rapid transit and increased frequency are also good things, but there are a lot of things that miss the mark in this plan. There are really serious coverage concerns, which have been covered um, throughout the night. Um, especially with inclement weather in Wisconsin and the um, large number of elderly people who fall due to ice, um, increasing distances to walk to bus stops is a concern for our aging populations, people with disabilities, um, and also young, right, young people and anyone, right? We're all, all pedestrians if we're riding transit. And so pedestrian safety needs to be better integrated into the plan. I'd also like to see um, an analysis of how this plan uh, impacts people of color and low-income neighborhoods with campus data removed um, because peripheral neighborhoods versus the downtown campus are going to have need uh, different needs. Um, the other thing is that uh, living at the Atwood neighborhood, I was really excited to see Amendment 3B, um, which connects Aberg to um, the pick and save. However, I was sad to see that the cross over East Washington was eliminated. I think something that transit has the opportunity to do is increase integration of our neighborhoods. Um, and right now, East Washington is a major barrier for people to get um, from one side of the city to the other. So that cross um, uh, across East Washington, I, I would love to see put back in with connection to Aber, uh, via Aberg to the pick and save. Um, I think a lot of the amendments spoken about tonight uh, are really important. I also hope to see this committee uh, and staff work with um, WSDOT on the Beltline plan and better integrate transit, walking, and biking with that planning process so that people who live outside of the Beltline are better connected via our transit system. And then, of course, um, this is the best of a bad financial situation, or maybe not even the best of <laughs> This is making something of a tough financial situation. And so I hope that we can be uh, honest that this is a, a vision of what the system has to do to stay afloat. And I hope that in the future, better funding can allow us to have the transit system that we all need and deserve. Thank you. Thank you, Cassandra. Are there any questions for the speaker? All right, seeing none, our next registrant is uh, Josh Jenkins, 2609 County Rose Court, Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, um, Chair, Josh has already uh, spoke earlier. Thank you. Yeah, that one did look familiar. Um, all right. Uh, the next registrant then is uh, Nola Walker, 2026 Ardmore Drive, Madison, in opposition, wishing to speak. Nola Chair, Walker. Chair, that person was just in attendance seconds ago, but has now fallen off the attendance list. Good eye out. Um, our next registrant is um, Alina. Um, Polskova, uh, 337 West Mifflin Street, Madison, Wisconsin, in opposition, 
not wishing to speak, but available to answer questions, representing uh, Red Square Flowers and many State Street businesses. Are there any questions for Alina? Seeing none, our next registrant is Joe Frost, 501 Whitehall Drive, Madison, neither in support nor opposition, not wishing to speak, available to answer questions. Are there any questions for Joe? Seeing none, our next registrant is Michael Goodman, uh, 21 Maplewood Lane, Madison, in opposition, not wishing to speak. Cynthia McCallum, 705 South Shore Drive, Madison, in opposition, not wishing to speak. Harry Richardson, 456 North Few Street, Madison, in opposition, not wishing to speak. Heather Wenger, 907 Chapel Hill Road, Madison, um, in opposition, not wishing to speak. Uh, Chair, sorry to interrupt. It looks like you haven't refreshed. Um, so we have a couple of speakers. Uh, Nola Walker, Victoria Gutierrez, uh, Linda Leonard, Greg Jones. Looks like we have most of them here. So uh, we left off, I believe, at Josh Jenkins. So Nola Walker would be our next. Hey, uh, Nola, if you're here, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, Nola was on. That was uh, I okay. stated. Right. Yeah, but uh, Nola had dropped off um, out of out of attendance. So uh, the Victoria. next person would be uh, Victoria. Yep. Uh, Thirteen fifty one South Street. Victoria, you should be unmuted. Hi, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, we can. Yep. Okay. I want to thank everybody for the opportunity to speak. I've been a longtime resident here on the South Side in the Bay Creek neighborhood. I have the advantage of being a nurse in my District 13, and I um, don't depend on the bus for my job. But a lot of essential workers and frontline workers in my district and neighborhood do. And I'm really dismayed at the lack of transparency that I've, you know, that I see and experience. Um, I found out about all of the details of this from, thank goodness, for from our neighborhood advocacy group. I mean, we've been struggling here um, in this district with food scarcity. Um, highly, I feel like vultures are circling overhead for the area, um, trying to have affordable housing. And um, this you know, public transportation issue, I'd like to really advocate for putting public back into public transportation and advocating for greater transparency in this process with the city of Madison. I agree with how eloquently um, everybody else prior to me has spoken about um, equity and the commitment to equity. And in a city like Madison, I just really am dismayed that this, you know, it's not like we're Chicago or a larger metropolitan area that, um, you know, we can't have uh, a greater transparency, B, uh, you know, just really a demonstrated, exhibited commitment to equity. Um, I appreciate the, uh, the, the interpreter tonight, but, you know, in our neighborhood, we've historically had um, not only Spanish, but Hmong and Lao, and, um, you know, having that representation and that transparency um, demonstrated to be able to have those constituents be able to participate in such a an important decision. I mean, it's not just having uh, the bus, it's everything that impacts that. It's your livelihood. It's like people have stated, you know, being able to get to a grocery store, being able, and if we're talking about walking more, I mean, this corridor is not the most pedestrian friendly. You're walking across an interstate highway with many times there's so much construction going on. It's poorly marked. People are, you know, caravaning down the street. There's not um, crosswalks uh, 
even at the pick and save to get across Park Street. And if you um, have uh, visibility issues, mobility issues, um, you know, all the rest of it, 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 it's, it's, it's a safety issue um, as well. So I am calling for a slowing down of the process so much so that it ceases progression so that the impacted uh, constituents and, um, you know, those of us that are negatively impacted have a voice at the table to know what's going on. Um, I really appreciate the earlier constituent and public speaker who said, who called for having um, a, a person, a disabled person or a person who rides, you know, who, who, who uses the bus is a voting member. Um, I think all of the feedback has been intelligent, eloquent, and um, timely, and please take heed to what we're, what we're saying. Thank you. All right, thank you. Um, I believe our next, oh, go ahead, Baltazar. I'm sorry, yeah, were there questions for the speaker? Go ahead, Baltazar. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, <clears throat> Victoria, thank you very much for, for uh, uh, your, your, your presentation. I think, uh, you know, we, we heard many folks talking about lack of outreach and all of that. You can just, you know, especially in that neighborhood, you can just add just a little bit more about that, uh, you know, especially uh, outreach, you know, in, in other languages, uh, uh, you know, and including other communities. If you can just add just a little bit more in that area. Yeah, um, you know, in our neighborhood, we have um, I, District 13 goes all the way up to the hospital I work at, Meritor, and in there is Bayview. Um, historically, there have been a large Hmong and Lao population that have been there. Um, also down on back into um, the other community garden. I'd have to look at the district, but I've lived and worked in this district for 20 years. And, you know, we, we have a large uh, Latinx population, Spanish speaking population. Um, uh, so, yeah. Thank you very much, Victoria. Alder Furman, go ahead. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, I, we're probably not doing this, but uh, obviously we just asked a question of somebody who said they didn't see outreach, what the outreach was, at least that's how I interpreted it. I don't know if it's worth asking staff to talk about that. Are we going to talk about that next week? Go ahead, Mike. I don't know how, I don't know how far we want to go down the rabbit hole of, of yeah, staff, not, but I just. Hopefully not very far. We are going to be taking this up next week with, with the intent to vote. So if we could do a quick response, it would be appreciated. Sure, I can just summarize. Uh, so this this project has been going on for about a year and a half now. At the beginning, when we were talking about higher level concepts, we had a handful of more general public meetings. As we after we developed the draft plan, we then held about ten uh, geographically focused meetings in the the Madison area as well as uh, in Fitchburg and Middleton. And then we held a, nu a number of other uh, focused community meetings, about 50 in total. Thank you, Mike. Um, can I ask your question, Alder Furman? Yes, okay, thank you. All right, um, I believe I have the updated uh, um, registrants list now. Um, so the next registrant then is uh, Linda Lanehart's uh, South Patterson Street, Madison, in opposition wishing to speak. Uh, Linda, are you with us? Looks like you are. Welcome. Uh, Linda, it's uh, star six to unmute. There you go. It looks Hello. Like you're in. There you go. Thank you. Um, one of my questions is how much... BRT is taking away from the current system. Up until September of 2020, 
the website said that BRT will complement, not replace, Metro's current service. And then by October of 2020, it was changed that um, BRT is part of an effort to integrate the existing transit system. And so it seems like I've looked and I cannot find how much this new service is going to cost versus how much BRT is going to cost and what sort of cost shifting there is. And more importantly, is that cost shifting worthwhile? Um, at one point, you were told that um, 5%, I think it was 3 to $5 million, would be the maximum cost for BRT because of the Small Starts Grant. Yet the Small Starts Grant says that the operating costs are $14.7 million. Um, the consultant that was hired told you that, quote, a substantial part of the network's existing resources will go to operating BRT. Unquote. And so there's a question in my mind of how much money is going to BRT, how much is worthwhile. You've heard a lot tonight from people who feel that service justifiably is being decreased. And part of the, the rationale for all of this is that jobs are going to be more accessible to more people. I find it a bit incongruous that um, these maps of the additional areas were done at noon. I'm not sure who goes to a job at noon, but it would make more sense to do perhaps 8 a.m. and 2.30 p.m. for second shift workers. Um, the comprehensive plan, page 31, says a racial equity and social justice analysis should be completed as route restructuring progresses so that the impacts of changes on Metro customers are in understood prior to implementation. And measures can be taken to ensure the system will be a net improvement for transit-dependent populations. That hasn't been done. Um, it, again, doesn't seem to make sense to me why that wasn't done before you're taking your final vote on that. Um, but that's what the comp plan says. You had an equity area map analysis that was presented to you at one point in time. One of those is the north side of Madison um, around Northport, what had 42% um, minority proportions. And yet, there, that was entirely cut out. Now there is a amendment number nine that will restore partial service. Um, but it's replacing 30-minute service with service that is 60 to 75 minutes, which is better than nothing. But if that is adopted, I urge you to take that and take it from Delaware to School Road to encompass more of the neighborhood for probably an additional five-minute ride. Um, amendment number one, which you're looking what was um, proposed in staff support, looks at counterclockwise or clockwise, says either one is Sorry, Linda, okay. that is time. Thank you. Um, are there any questions for the registrant? Seeing none, our next registrant is uh, Greg Jones, 2877 Forest Down, uh, Fitchburg, in opposition, wishing to speak. Good afternoon. Representing, I'm sorry, representing um, NC, uh, NAACP Dane County. I'm sorry, go ahead. Good afternoon. Uh, good evening, everyone, and thank you for the opportunity. My name is Greg Jones, and I'm president of the Dane County NAACP. That stands for the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. It is the oldest civil rights organization in this country. We are approaching 113 years, and we'll we'll meet that date. We'll meet that birthday in July of this year. I want to speak to this issue because concerns have reached the NAACP from various members across this county. Their concerns, while many have been laid out uh, and outlined tonight, waiting lists, travel time to bus stops and so forth, I wanna speak to the overall policy impact of this proposal and begin by saying what's needed. I look at this project uh, from uh, three layers, the equity layer, the quality of life layer, and the dependent riders layer. This project should have started with the needs of the riders. In some of our neighborhoods, we have dependent riders relying on this particular public transportation to get to entertainment, medical services, uh, food grocery stores, 
That can't be overlooked. The needs of riders should be first and foremost, who's riding these buses and what are their needs and how do we help them meet their needs? That goes directly into the quality of life. Madison has a strong tradition of meeting and advancing quality of life for all of its residents. This is a major adjustment in terms of transportation needs, transportation options, and must be considered as we go forward. Therefore, we have called for uh, the city to take a step back, go back and evaluate all questions, all options, make sure that they are equitable, make sure the impact is understood, make sure that individuals who live in this city and outside this city who depend on public transportation understands it, agrees with it. The worst thing you can have is a public policy not supported by the citizenry. I want to twist, uh, shift gears a little bit and talk about an article written in August 2020 by the Institute on Urban Research, Transportation, Urban Disparity, and Urban Planning. And that particular article said, from funding, planning, and infrastructure to design and policing, many transit agencies essentially have built two systems with different standards, one for the choice rider and one for the dependent rider. This article goes on to say, let's do the hard work to achieve transit equity. There are different standards for so-called dependent and choice rider. Dependent means they're going to be picky. The primary emphasis here is on providing service, not providing good experience. For the choice rider, it's a fundamentally different purpose. That is to provide, the agencies want to provide great service to those riders. I'm saying this to you tonight. Madison, making transit equitable requires us to question how we make decisions. Making transit equitable means listening to all riders from all community. Public transportation should reflect the will of the people and it must meet the needs of the citizens. And concluding here tonight, just a couple other points. Uh, number one, the concerns that have come to me and the NAACP comes from residents in Monona and Fishburg, outside of Madison, particularly the Allied Drive area in Madison. There are people who in Allied Drive who learned about this process a week ago called and said, we take the, the bus into Madison to the South Transfer, po South Transfer Point to go to Monona, to WPS for employment opportunities and to Walmart for employment opportunities and shopping opportunities. We don't know what's going to happen to this route. It's incumbent on city managers, public policymakers, to meet with individuals, answer all of their questions, and show them, show them through conversation, data, and otherwise, why certain options don't fit. It is the worst thing to have an option not accepted and not evaluated and not being told why the, what the issues are. Number two, uh, uh, number three, transportation policy issues that have come up. I mentioned one, the mayor and the staff, department staff must meet with individual residents. This is a major- I'm sorry, Greg, but, I'm sorry, Greg, but that's- It time. must be changed. Thank you. Um, thank you, Greg. Are there any questions for the speaker? Alder Miyazi, go ahead, please. Uh, yes, for Greg Jones, uh, he was just summing up what he was saying. Can you still speak to that equity part that you were summing up, please? Go ahead, Greg. Sure. One of the jobs I had in state government was the Division Administrator for Affirmative Action. That job was riddled with questions, and it had policy behind it. The fundamental purpose of it was to take a look at impact. We needed to understand the impact of the employment system on women, minorities, persons with disabilities, and then respond to that. The impact that must be addressed in this analysis must show not just equity, but also inclusion. In my understanding, there are certain communities that need that bus by dependent reason. They need to have clear, convincing information about what's changes. And by the way, I've heard from people on the north side of Madison concerned about these new changes. So it's not just those communities I mentioned, this thing is widespread, and it's incumbent on our public policymakers, the mayor, the representatives, the alders from the various, to sit down with those people and answer that question. It's not for them to reach out to you. It's for you to reach out to them. Hopefully that helps. Thank you. Okay. 
Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Alder Miyadze. Um, our next registrant is, I'm sorry, were there any other questions for the speaker? Seeing none, um, our next registrant is Alina uh, Plotskova uh, in opposition, not wishing to speak at 337 West Mifflin. I believe I went over some of these earlier. I'll go over them briefly. Uh, Joe Frost, of one Whitehall, Madison, neither in support nor opposition, not wishing to speak, but available to answer questions. Uh, Michael Goodman, 21 Maplewood Lane, Madison, in opposition, not wishing to speak. Cynthia uh, McCallum, 705 South Shore, in opposition, not wishing to speak. Kay Richardson, uh, 456 North Few Street, in opposition, not wishing to speak. Heather Wenger, 907 Chapel Hill Road, opposition, not wishing to speak. Carol uh, Bulow, 4206 Doncaster Drive, uh, in support, not wishing to speak. Uh, Pauline Blattner, 523 West Olin Avenue, in opposition, not wishing to speak. Robert Hemmen, 502 Ridge Street, in opposition, not wishing to speak. Nicholas Davies, 3717 Richard Street, uh, in support, not wishing to speak. Um, and Cassandra Steiner, I think we heard from her. Um, Susan uh, Jeskewski, I'm not going to be able to pronounce that. Uh, Jeskewski. Excuse, sorry, I can't pronounce that. Um, 902 North High Point in opposition, uh, not wishing to speak. And then uh, I believe we have a few folks that um, we uh, skipped over because they weren't on the call or dropped off the call. Um, is there a Kim Owens? Hello, Kim. Yes. You may go ahead. I'm sorry we missed you earlier. Yes, I just, it was my fault technically with the technical stuff. Um, yes, I'm from the north side and um, getting, um, requesting some st local um, issues be addressed on the north side. I really was amazed to see um, Amendment 9, and I don't really understand at all what the reasoning and rationale is that we're going to have such a, you know, to go within a 25 foot square, 25 miles neighborhood, we're going to go take this be part of line L that goes 10 miles, 15 miles out and back. You know, I mean, it seems that there's some areas that are being served by that line that weren't even in the original um, draft plan that until you introduced it, included us into it, weren't going there like Kinsman and Atwood right along the lake. Um, you know, that there's, a couple of places, like, you know, even if he went around Kinsman or whether you did it around Sherman and the, uh, excuse me, Stoughton Road and in the Woodman's area, that, that I don't see why this um, Amendment 9 has to be so long and go all the way out to Dutch Mill Park and Ride. It can there's some turnarounds be where it just, you know, hits Woodman's Grocery and can be a point of transfer somewhere to get to Walmart, get to the pick and save. You know, we can serve the um, Aberg. Is you know, I saw in the 220 um, report submitted that Northside residents really did want some more trans transit there. So go down, you know, Aberg where they've got those new apartment buildings, workforce developments there, um, shopping center, and we wanted some development. Um, or we've got some issues are trying to figure out what to do with Sherman Avenue, which is really used a lot. I mean, I'm just saying Amendment 9, I really, I couldn't believe to my eyes to see something so extravagant and large and something when we ask for some local help with our, you know, neighbors that are up by um, Tennyson and Wheeler and we'll have to walk over a mile to get to Pack Northport, excuse me. You know, I mean, they're in the Dryden Terrace Apartments and Pick and Save. You know, there's some other things that can be included in that, like I said, Sherman and the Aberg um, area there that's by the North Transfer Point. But, you know, there's housing going up there. They're starting to rent it, actually. And so, I mean, what is the, why was, not, why was Amendment 9, you know, drawn up as such when we were asking for just a lo some local troubleshooting in a local route on the north side from the loss of service. 
you know. I mean, it doesn't mean that we have to have it running every 30 minutes, you know. I mean, that's what we're used to, but um, it doesn't seem to make it very useful because, I mean, it brings it down Walter Street, which is not, you know, necessary. It wasn't in the draft plan. I mean, the 16 used to come down that, but, you know, you all have it drawn up where it doesn't need to come down Walter anymore by um, Milwaukee Street. So, I mean, I just don't understand all the all the little commas and periods and loops. I mean, it goes against what y'all are saying about direct, you know, um, uh, rapid transit, you know, and not being so um, circuitous and such. But, I mean, there are the streets in Madison are not all parallel. We're not a grid, you know, like Chicago and such. There are some little... Sorry, Kim, that's time. Thank you. Are there any questions for the registrant? I'm seeing none. Um, I see. Have I uh, missed anyone that you're aware of? Uh, yeah, there is uh, John Beeman. Okay, John's here. Hello, John. Welcome. Looks like you might be muted, John. Let's give them a second. Um, it is at the, they're doing a, a group streaming at the CDA. So they may be trying to get John to the microphone. Um, if anyone is close that can unmute, can confirm that, that would be great. Um, if you're not able to unmute yourself right now, um, there should be a prompt. It may be underneath a window. I just got a message saying that John had already spoken, um, perhaps with a number of folks that have spoken. And we... Yeah, John's already spoken. Okay, thank you. We're just trying to circle back to make sure we got everybody in this, with, a, with a large number of folks and people registering late. It's uh, sometimes difficult to keep track. Oh, that's no problem. Thank you. Uh, just trying to make sure we don't leave anyone out. Um, all right. I believe that is everyone that is registered for the public hearing. Uh, thank you to all registrants. Thank you to staff and other um, elders who are here, members of the committees who are here. Um, we will, the Transportation Policy and Planning Board will be taking up these amendments and voting uh, again in one week. Um, so if you or other folks you know we're not able to make this meeting, um, please join us for the meeting on June 6th. Um, Alder Halverson, go ahead, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, if it's appropriate or when it's appropriate, I'd like to just make a few comments to the board. Um, let me, so I'll, I'll formally close the public hearing. Um, go ahead, Alder Halverson. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you to the board uh, for giving this public, uh, holding this public hearing tonight. And also uh, appreciate um, all the registrants that spoke and this, of course, the time that the staff has put into this. So I'm, I just wanted to just share a few comments, a few thoughts that I've had on this, been kind of tracking this as, as you have as well. Um, asking the same questions I'm sure that you are asking yourselves, um, is this redesign going to accomplish the goals it's set out to do? Um, is it going to ensure equit equitable routes, reduce travel times for disproportionately impacted riders, which according to uh, Director Lynch's presentation also talks about uh, primarily consisting of African-Americans and Hispanics as well as others. And is it and is it going to provide access to the jobs? Um, and so, these these goals seem to be outlined in the transit plan itself, as well as the mayor had a blog on the 13th that also brought some additional clarity to this from her perspective and her office's perspective. And so, I just wanted to comment a few a few of these things. My concern would be about if we have the right data. Are we working with good data initially on on what we're looking at here to really effectively make decisions based on whether we are going to have equitable routes or if we are getting the feedback we need from impacted communities. And we've heard a bunch of uh, registrants today talk about uh, the various different uh, impacted communities and whether their outreach has been sufficient for that. Now I know that the mayor's blog talks about having 50 uh, different uh, outreach meetings over the last however long, 
And my question would be, is that have we have we actually gotten the engagement from the most impacted? We know that um, there was one reference that the town of Madison had zero meetings. Uh, we know that there was some disabled uh, registrants today that talked about not having their voice heard. Uh, these are things I think we need to consider, especially when we're talking about making a redesign that is going to impact, uh, as we know, dependent drivers more than it is choice drivers, riders, excuse me. Um, so as we're thinking about between now and the next time you guys are going to vote on this, um, these are the things that I hope you're mulling over, as I know that I am. Um, the justification for, for for doing this redesign appears to be in the transit plan, a lot about jobs and access to jobs. My question around that would be, are we, um, did we get good data with regards to the jobs that are available? And is there a metric on the jobs that uh, we know that these areas that we're trying to, to provide routes to are going to actually give access to jobs? What type of jobs are gonna be available? Um, where does that also leave the redesign with regards for evenings and weekends or third shift or second shift jobs? Has that been metric been looked at? And I know that uh, Yvonne had mentioned that as well as Linda mentioned about second and third shift jobs. And what about the need for other travel to healthcare, education? We have dependent riders. Those are questions that I'm thinking about and I'm looking at this data and wanting to know. Of course, the, big, the bigger question would be equitable. Is this equitable? Are we ensuring equitable? And the, and the, the ACLU it did bring up a concern about this. So this isn't just um, my talking, but there's other concerns that the ACL brought up about, is this going to actually be in violation potentially of the Title VI? And I know that the, uh, the Metro responded to that um, concern in that letter from the ACLU saying that, um, that they do plan on doing a full Title VI service quality equity analysis for the transit network redesign once they get closer to the final route recommendation. Uh, we've heard from Greg Jones tonight uh, about why wasn't this, you know, the first thing we looked at with regards to equity, quality of life, and dependent riders. And I kind of agree with him as to that would be something we would look at. Some of the reasoning behind why it wasn't and that what is going to be a to-do list is that it would be too difficult to determine the variables. And I have concerns about that statement. Um, I have concerns that uh, we are talking about an impact to the uh, some of the most um, the the riders that are going to be impacted the most. These are the ones that we are, need to make sure that we're doing an analysis on. So there was under one other comment I just want to make, and then I'll I'll let you guys. It's been a long evening, but with regards to uh, the BRT and the redesign and how they interact with each other, I know that uh, Linda, one of the registrants, did mention that she had a question about how BRT will impact the redesign or if they're going to impact it. Uh, I know that the the uh, the mayor did speak to this as well about how Metro Rapid BRT uh, and Transit Network redesign are separate projects and acknowledge the effects of each other on each other, but that each one is separate and that they uh, neither project restricts the consideration or alternatives of the other project, nor does adopting one mean you have to adopt the other. Uh, I, I question that statement. I, I think that these absolutely do impact each other, especially with regards to funding. We do know that the the redesign is going to impact um, funding, and that's the reason that we're making these cuts in the first place, is that because of funding challenges to work within the budget. So are we going to be able to effectively do this redesign and afford it without running into equitable issues? I don't know that that's the case at this time. and. I think we need to, to really take a look at what we're doing here before we move forward for a vote. I, I don't think that this is ready for, for that. I think it needs to bake a little longer. I think we have some work to do to ensure we're not falling uh, falling uh, on the wrong side of equity and we're on the wrong side of what we're trying to do here. So those are some things to uh, to think about. I will also submit for the record a map that I put together that does overlay the, uh, the transit um, mapping about low income in areas of the city, as well as I did grab off of the University of Wisconsin, um, the, it's the University of Wisconsin Neighborhood Atlas, and you can go look this up and I will send this in for the record to all the board members as well. Um, that is the, using the same statistical data, same time frame, and it is high, and it highlights areas of the city that um, don't match up with what we're our analysis. So it brings me back to my first point. Are we, uh, the data that we're looking at a good basis uh, is it is it the right basis? Um, considering that the the transit 
report also talks about using 2021 route data. Um, so that's going to, again, minimize the, make it look like it's minimizing the impact on equity routes. If we actually took data from pre-COVID 2019, we would see that the equity routes have been dramatically impacted a lot higher than what we're seeing in this current model. So I think we need to consider those things before we, we move forward on this. So I think this still needs to bake. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Board. Thank you, Alder. Um, all right, I'm seeing some more hands come in. Um, I, I, I want to, I gave one uh, Alder permission to speak, and I, I'm not going to deny others, but um, this is the intent of this was not to be a discussion, and I think we're going to be pushing the boundaries of well, what we're allowed in open meetings if we continue. Um, Alder Mazzi, go ahead, please. Chair, I, I would like to make a point of order. We're, this was supposed to be a public hearing, and we're supposed to have discussion and and debate at our next meeting. So I don't. If a bunch of alders are going to start giving opinions, we're going to turn this into a discussion. I really think we should we should end the meeting and do that at our next meeting. Thank you, Alder. Um, the chair um, um, believes that the point is sustained. Is there any opposition to um, closing the meeting for members of the board? Alder Harrington McKinney, go ahead, please. Thank you. Um, on the agenda, it says um, adopting the Metro Network Redesign Plan, public hearing only, item to be adjourned, the item to be adjourned to June 6, 2021, a meeting for board deliberation and vote. No votes May the 31st. I interpret that, and please correct me, I don't know. Um, I, I interpret that is, is this is public comment. Um, it says that the, the board, we are not deliberating, uh, we are listening. And if that is the case, I would, I would lift that um, uh, public comment includes alders as well. We are not engaging in debate, we are listening. Our debate time will be uh, on uh, at the June deliberation, but at this point we are listening, and as we are listening, uh, we should also allow alders to make their comment, unless um, unless I am out of order. And so I'm not going to uh, uh, support adjourning unless all voices are heard. Alder Foster, go ahead. Yeah, well, what just happened there was not public comment. Alder Halvers did not register to speak, did not have a three-minute time limit. You used Alder privilege to participate in any meetings like all Alders can, and it was discussion. This is not a continuation of our public hearing. Out of respect for the board members, I would ask my colleagues to keep your comments, bring them to the next meeting, and we'll have a very robust discussion about all of these items. And let's be respectful of what we share with the public, that we were going to take public testimony tonight adjourn the meeting until our next one where we have our discussion. So at the end of the day, a point of order was made and the chair agreed with the point of order. It takes a two thirds, if I'm correct, majority to overrule um, a ruling by the chair on a point of order. Um, we can vote on this. Um, on sustaining the point of order, um, all those in favor, um, what's the two roll call vote? Point Reed, of, would you please call the privilege. roll? I'd like to have the, um, uh, be a city attorney weigh in on what's in order. Is there a city attorney present? There is not. Um, Robert's rules of order is, is fairly straightforward, I think, in this case. A two thirds vote is required to overturn. Uh, Margaret, go ahead, please. Can you give us some guidance on this? Uh, actually, I just want to hear you state the state your motion again, just so that I'm clear. So a point of order was made to stop the commentary because this is a public hearing and it was not meant for discussion by board members or um, or alders um, that did not register as individual registrants for public comment. Um, point of order was made that the meeting should end and not continue um, in the understanding that we are pushing the boundaries if we haven't crossed them up by violating open meetings law and that we um, okay, publish this as a public hearing only. The chair has agreed with that point of order, and I believe it requires a two-thirds vote to overturn a ruling of the chair in this matter. So there would be a vote on whether or not to sustain the ruling of the chair. If there is more than a two-thirds vote in opposition to the ruling that I have made, then we will continue with whatever the board wants to do. 
So if we could please have a roll call vote on whether or not to sustain the point of order that the meeting should conclude. Reeve, would you please call the roll? Yes. Grant Foster? Could you quick clarify the I and the no on this? So, I mean, I think generally somebody would have to object to your ruling and then we, I don't know if an I is what. So please, please either um, object to my ruling or um, agree with the ruling. Does that make it more clear? So an I, an I means we agree with the ruling? Yes, and I would, I would mean you would agree with the ruling. Okay, I. Are we ready to vote? Yes, uh, so Alder Foster has voted aye. Um, please continue with the roll call. Keith Furman? Aye. Barbara Harrington McKinney? No. Randy Udell? <coughs> aye. Christopher McCahill? Aye. Tom Wilson? I will not vote in, unless there's a tie. Sorry. Baltazar Deanna Santana? Aye. Margaret Bergamini? Aye. And Carolyn McAndrews? Aye. That is seven votes um, aye, one vote no. That motion carries to the point of order um, is sustained. Um, the meeting is concluded. Um, I would uh, train a motion to adjourn. Move adjournment. Thank you, Alder Firm. Is there a second? Second. Second by Margaret, thank you. All those in favor of adjourning the meeting for the evening, please unmute yourselves and say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Chair believes the ayes have it. We're adjourned. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>